The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Chapter 3 And there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art come a teacher from God, for no man can do these signs which thou dost, unless God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to thee, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, Amen, Amen, I say to thee, unless a man be born again of water and the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Wonder not that I said to thee, you must be born again. The spirit breatheth where he will, and thou hearest his voice, but thou knowest not whence he cometh, and whither he goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be done? Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master in Israel, and knowest not these things? Amen, amen, I say to thee, that we speak what we know, and we testify what we have seen, and you receive not our testimony. If I have spoken to you earthly things, and you believe not, how will you believe if I shall speak to you heavenly things? And no man ascended into heaven, but he that descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but have life everlasting. For God so loved the world as to give his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish, but have life everlasting. For God sent not his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world may be saved by him. He that believeth in him is not judged, but he that doth not believe is already judged, because he believeth not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, because the light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than the light, for their works were evil. For every one that doth evil hateth the light, and cometh not to the light, that his works may not be reproved. But he that doth truth cometh to the light, that his works may be made manifest, because they are done in God. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he abode with them and baptized. And also, John was baptizing in Enna near Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. And there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews concerning purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan to whom thou gavest testimony, behold, he baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man cannot receive anything unless it be given him from heaven. You yourselves do bear me witness that I said, I am not Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, who standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth 
with joy because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth, of the earth he is, and of the earth he speaketh. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony, and hath, hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God doth not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loveth the Son, and he hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth in the Son have life everlasting. But he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, just a few observations on this third chapter of St. John's Gospel. We Catholics, when we read verses uh, 3 and verse 5, uh, being born again, this is the renewal of the man. We are born in Adam, the old man, and a metaphysical ontological change happens in the person who is united with Jesus Christ. We call that being born again. And Christ indicates what he means here because this whole chapter is about baptism and John the Baptist. And he indicates that being born again in verse 5 is being born again of water and the Holy Ghost. 100% of the church fathers, from Ignatius of Antioch and Polycarp, who knew the apostles, all the way up to all the theologians up into the Reformation, 100% of them agreed that this chapter, this section, is about the sacrament of baptism. Baptism is a sacrament that works and places a character in the soul, and it regenerates the soul. It infuses faith, hope, and charity. But it doesn't mean necessarily that that person will persevere and be saved. This is something that's very confusing to um, many evangelicals at our time. They think being born again is making a profession of faith. That's certainly part of baptism. You make a profession of faith when you are baptized. We call it the Apostles' Creed. There are 12 dogmas that you must confess to be baptized, and those 12 dogmas are the Apostles' Creed, the 12 Articles of Faith. But that sacrament creates a real union between the believer and Jesus Christ. It's, it's like a man and a woman who love each other, and then they get married. That ceremony of marriage does something to them. They probably don't love each other anymore. Maybe they do 20 minutes after the marriage ceremony. But the marriage ceremony, which is also a sacrament, creates a bond in that moment between the man and the woman. And baptism creates a bond between Jesus Christ and the believer. And in the case of an infant, the same bond is made with the promise of educating that child in the future. But still, the bond is made. The character of baptism is branded into the soul of that person. The reason is, is because that, verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh. Anyone born of Adam and Eve cannot attain heaven. It's a controversial topic, especially when you talk about the baptism of infants in limbo. I won't go into that. I talk about that in other videos. But we must be born of the Spirit. And here we see in this chapter, it's very Trinitarian, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There's a testimony to the Father, but Jesus Christ is teaching here. It's kind of his major presentation on the Holy Spirit. The Spirit breatheth where he will. 
A couple other observations here is he says that he must be lifted up like the serpent in the desert. This is referring to the time when Moses, the people of Israel, were getting bitten by uh, venomous snakes. And God told Moses to put, raise up a bronze serpent. And if the people would just look up to the serpent with faith, they would be cured. Well, here Christ takes the penalty of sin, symbolized by the serpent, and if we look to him crucified, we'll be saved. This is one reason why Catholics have crucifixes. Just as there was a physical serpent that people look to, so we have physical icons, physical crucifixes that we look at, and this strengthens our faith. Just like we have nativity scenes, strengthens our faith, helps us realize that, yes, Christ was born and placed in a manger. Then there's the conversation with John the Baptist. They go to John the Baptist and say, hey, this, uh, this other guy is kind of doing your thing. He's plagiarizing your spiritual breakthrough, these baptisms. And he says, look, I told you, I am not the Christ. I testified to him. He's the Christ. He's the bridegroom. I am just the best man. I'm standing there. I rejoice in his voice, but I'm not the one getting married to Israel. Jesus is the one who's getting married to Israel. He's the bridegroom. And then at the end are some powerful words of hope, of salvation, but also condemnation. Uh, he says that he who believeth in the Son have life everlasting. That's true. He who believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. Do you believe that anyone you know that doesn't believe in Jesus has the wrath of God abiding on them? It's pretty serious. Everyone in your family, your friends, your co-workers who do not believe in the Son of God, according to John chapter 3, have the wrath of God abiding on them. It's the final verse, verse 36. But everyone who believes in him will be saved. Verse 16, up above. This is why we have to share the gospel with people. You must, by your life, yes, but also by your words, tell them about Jesus. He is the Son of God. And pray for them. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll continue with John chapter 4 uh, tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. If you like this video and you think it's helpful, maybe people want to go through the Gospel of John with us, um, please like it. But more importantly, please share it. Go on Parlor, Twitter, and Facebook and share this video. Thanks so much. God bless. Godspeed. And happy Advent.